Hey guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. I have a classic for you today. We're going to learn how to play Lou Reed's Walk on the Wild Side. So, now, this one's pretty simple when it comes to the left hand. The chords are, are really easy in this. Um, but what makes this a, a great exercise is the right hand. So, there's a couple of rhythms that he plays. Um, so, he kind of, kind of does like a simplified version of the rhythm. And then he, he when he wants to kind of make it uh, bring the dynamics up a little bit, a little bit later in the track, he'll do this pattern slightly different. So I'm going to show you both ways, but I've got to really kind of take this as an opportunity of how to approach strumming. If you're someone out there that has issues with strumming on the guitar, strumming chords, and coming up, figuring out strumming patterns, um, hopefully this will help you kind of break through that barrier and just be able to do it naturally by feel and by using your ear instead of always relying on like a little down, up, up pattern. All right. So before I do that, please uh, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell, of course, so you'll know when I release a new video. And check out my Guitar Academy. It's at guitarlessons365.com. And thank you for anybody who has joined this channel, by the way, by clicking the Join button. A little small monthly donation to this uh, YouTube channel helps me keep cranking out these lessons. All right, let's get going. Well, I'm in standard tuning here. So let me just cover the chords real quick. The, chord, the, the whole song is very simple. Most of it is just two chords, and then we get this one little chorus section um, where we have one additional chord added, and that's it. So let's just show you, I'm going to just show you the chords first because then this is going to be mostly a rhythm lesson after that. So I'm going to start with just a C major chord. So that's an open E, first fret on the B, open G, second fret on the D, and then the third fret on the A string. You can see charts for all the basic... Uh, chords uh, at guitarlessons365.com. Just check out the, the beginner section. All right, so we have that. And then the next chord we have is on the actual recording, there's actually a couple of guitars that are strumming at the same time. The one you're probably hearing the most is the one that's playing this. So we have an F6 chord. So what we're doing is we're playing the first fret on the high E. Then the third fret on the B string, you can play that with your pinky. Then the second fret there on the G string. And then the third fret on the D. So just get that change going without the rhythm. It's all downstroke, a couple like four downstrokes. Just this is obviously not the rhythm. We're just trying to make get used to the change in the left hand. Alright, so now let's talk about the what's going on in the right hand here. When, when the song first starts, we have a rhythm that sounds like this. So that's a bit stripped down version of it. So let me show you what I'm doing here and how to understand it. When you're doing any kind of strumming style pattern, you need to first figure out what the division of the beat is. Now what I mean by that is, is if there's the the pulse of the of the track. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now you got to figure out just by the strums how many time, how many strums do you have for each beat. So if it's an eighth note strumming pattern, that means when you have when the beat hits, you do like a downstroke, and then the up of the beat. Uh, so you basically divide it like one and two and one and. So, so you got that downbeat is when my foot's hit on the ground. So I'm dividing each beat into two notes, and that's an eighth note feel. And then we have what is called a sixteenth note feel, where we're taking those um, each beat, and instead of just doing one and two and one, and, we're going to divide it into four. So it's going to be one e and. So I hope you can hear my foot hitting the floor here so you can kind of hear that one. I'm going to accent that downstroke. And then the other three hits, because it's four notes per beat there, uh, the other three hits, I'm going to just make them a little bit lighter so you can really hear one, two, three, four. So one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So a ma major majority of strum songs are either going to be that eighth note feel, it's two strums per beat, one. So one, two, three, four. 
or four notes per beat. Now, occasionally you'll have one that's three beats, uh, three strums per beat. That's kind of an odd a rhythm, you're going to see that a lot less. But I'd say more than 95% of strum songs are just either eighth note feel or um, 16th note feel. Now, for this song, it is a 16th note feel. Feel so we have this one, two, three, four. So you can feel that if I just played eighth notes, it wouldn't sound right. This sounds better. So that's how you kind of first learn how to do it. You learn how to feel with a 16th note verse, get the feel down. All right, then it becomes a process of never stopping that momentum in your hand. You want that one and a two and a, just to keep going. It doesn't matter if you don't hit the strings because you're not going to hit the strings every time, but you still need to do the movement in the right hand in order to make it um, to not lose the feel of the, of the strum. And that's where most people get confused with strumming patterns. They feel like they go, oh, it's a down, down, up, up, down, up. And so they go down, stop, down, up, stop, up, down, up. And it just feels awkward to them um, because they're stopping the momentum. You won't have to think of that pattern as long as you keep the momentum going. So if I have a 16th note pattern, 16th note feel, right? So I'm hitting the strings each time there. Now let's say this within that 16th note feel, I'm like da, 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 da. So I can just literally just hum the pattern of this song and put it within that da, 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 da. So I'm missing the strings a lot. One E and a two E. So it's even though I'm missing the strings, I'm never losing that feel. And that's how you should approach strumming. Figure out if it's eighth or sixteenth note feel, which is going to be 90% of the time, and then just literally hum the pattern or clap the pattern, the strumming, the, the sound that you hear coming from the guitar, and then make it meet, uh, you know, work within this. You're going to keep it going, even when you're there, you're in between hits. You've got to keep that momentum going. And then everything will start feeling just real natural, and you'll be able to do this by ear. So I wanted to make this a big strumming lesson because people always ask me for strumming patterns, and I usually don't give it to them because I'm always like, hey, man, if you just feel it correctly, you won't need the pattern. You'll be able to play it immediately just by ear. And that's how you feel it. You've got to break it down into an eighth or sixteenth note feel, get that going, and then just hum the pattern to yourself and follow along. That's it. So, obviously easier said than done. But now, the pattern here that we're doing here is if, if it's four notes for every beat, right? One E and a, two E and a. So what he's doing, um, in the beginning of the song at least, uh, early in the song, he's just going to one E and a. So he's going, he's hitting that first downstroke of the beat, then he's missing the strings on the up st stroke and the next downstroke, and then he finally hits the strings on the fourth, the upbeat, the fourth strum of the beat. So we have one, two, three, four. Okay, like one, two, three, four. Repeat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that is what you're going to be doing at, at the beginning of the song, just like three times on the first three beats. So the first three beats, that's all it was. One E and O, two E and O, three E and O. And then on the fourth beat, you basically just play, wait, you just do a little extra upbeat um, on the um, four E and O. Uh. So that's just like a little upstroke there that happens within the fourth beat. And that's it. So we have one E and O, two E and O, three E and O, four E and O, one E and O, two. So... It's pretty easy to, to get down. It's just three beats of the same thing. So all together, it looks like this. So that's kind of the simplified version of it. And then he does kind of a more expanded version of it. 
So it, you almost feel like that last upstroke of each beat kind of kind of takes you into that next the strum, the downbeat of the next beat. So what he he kind of keeps that feel, but instead of going up down up down up down up down, it goes up down up up down up up down. So he basically just adds another sixteenth note at the end of that little up down hit. So we have this. Keeping that 16th note feel going in my hand. Da 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 And then the simplified. Now you'll see sometimes when I'm doing those strums in between. I'm doing them across muted strings. That's kind of an effect that kind of fills up the sound, and you'll see him do that too. That's something that it's really just a feel thing that you'll get. As you get locked into that groove, you'll be able to add those on your own, be able to control the sound uh, of the fretted notes too. Um, so don't worry about that. It's just a feel thing. As you get comfortable with it, you'll probably just start adding them naturally. Now, um, a little bit later on the song, we have like the chorus section which adds a new chord. And most people think it's a D minor, but it's actually a D major. So I have this. And then we're back to the normal rhythm. Now this rhythm, when you get here, is kind of more straightforward. We don't really talk about it. You can almost strum it every single time if you want. But it's that C major chord, and it goes to a D major. And that's the chord that a lot of people get wrong. They play it. Um, as a D minor, but it's a D major. And then to that F6 chord, and then back to the D. So that, and then it goes back to the same little two chord band. Now I will say, when you're doing this F6, uh, the other recording, they the, the have the same, I don't know if I've already said this in the lesson, I don't know, I don't have much of a memory, but it, it, it plays a, there's a, Guitar on there that plays a full F chord too. So it is. Or you could just play the symbol for a four string version. So there is a guitar that's playing a normal F chord there. It's two guitars. But if you're going to do this on your. And, and that's what he does live. He plays a normal F major chord. Uh, but if you want to sound closer to recording, I think doing that F6 is a little bit higher in the mix. So it's going to sound more familiar to most people. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that little lesson on strumming. I don't do a lot of strumming stuff, so I thought it'd be good to kind of detail how you should feel it naturally. I have a Rhythm Foundations course. It's in the beginner section of my Guitar Academy at guitarlessus365.com. And that's basically what I what it's about. It's about just teaching you how to feel, feel rhythm naturally instead of always having to try to count stuff out. I mean, there's stuff that's really complex. Of course, you'll have to count out. Um, but if it's a basic feel like in this song, a lot of people get very confused by strumming patterns, and it's just simply because they're not approaching them the right way. It should be as easy as somebody just kind of, somebody clapping the rhythm to you, and you can clap it back. Well, you just now got to put it between the strum, and without stopping the hand, and just you know let the string, the pick at the string when that when the pattern is heard, when the, uh, a hit in the pattern is heard, and when there is no hit. Make sure the pick misses the strings, but always maintain that momentum and that up, down, down, up motion in a, either a eighth note or sixteenth note feel most of the time. All right, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for GuitarLessons365.com.